Hi everyone and welcome to DeFi Daily, the channel where every day we talk about DeFi, going through different analysis, tutorials and news. Today we are going to talk about Solfarm, one of the most growing platforms in the Solana DeFi ecosystem and the ones that is introducing a new mechanism of leveraging farming. We will go through it and we will understand how does it work. But before to start, I would like to ask you to sustain the channel to uh, just subscribing. It's quite easy, just press the subscribe button and please leave me also a thumbs up. A quick disclaimer, uh, always remember that all the contents in this channel are just for educational purpose and nothing has to be intended as a financial advice. If you want to invest in anything, that could be a great idea, but please do always your own research before doing anything. Okay, we are ready to jump into the topic and let's start with the platform of Solfar. As you can see in the upper bar, we have three different features, the vaults, the landing feature and the leverage farming. We will go through each of them. But before to start, I would like to say a couple of words on the total value locked on the platform. Right now it is around 650 million. So if we try to compare it with the main platforms on the Solana ecosystem, we will see that right now the Sol Farm platform is in the fourth place. As you can see here, it is the fourth in this ranking provided by DeFi Llama and it is just behind Sabre, Sunny and Radium. If we try to have a look to the trend of Soul Farm, as you can see here, uh, the platform has born around uh, the mid of May and since then the total value locked inside the platform has grown organically, reaching a peak around uh, the mid of September, just a couple of days ago, of 800 million. Since then, the uh, total value locked is uh, decreased quite a bit. Same, uh, same story when we are talking about the price of Soul Farm, and to analyze it, we can have a look to uh, the Coin Gecko platform. A couple of words also on why. Most of the time when I'm trying to analyze uh, the price of uh, uh, the tokens that we are gonna talk, I'm using CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap and not platform like TradingView. The reason is that I don't believe that uh, it makes any sense using any kind of technical analysis when we are talking about farming token or token that are so young that there is no historical data and most of the time we are talking about just rewarding tokens. So trying to make any kind of technical analysis, at least in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense. What is more interesting to understand what kind of price a certain token could reach is more interesting to do some kind of qualitative analysis that is including uh, looking at uh, the total value locked on the platform. That's the reason why most of the time I'm using DeFi Llama as we have seen here, because comparing the total value locked of each platform with uh, what is going on with similar projects is something that uh, can help us to understand what kind of price that kind of token will reach. Not to mention that it's always important to understand uh, that the price of each token is strictly connected to what's going on with the technology that is behind. For example, in this case, we are talking about Solfarm. Solfarm is a platform that is built on the Solana blockchain. So the destiny of Solfarm is closely related to what's going on on Solana. And this is something that you can easily understand for also from this kind of chart, because as you can see, the price of Soul Farm has gone, or Tulip, Tulip is the name of the token of Soul Farm, has gone up organically, reaching a, a maximum of $42, not even a couple of days ago, starting in July and going up more than 20 times. The reason why the price of Tulip has decreased so dramatically in the last couple of weeks 
it's uh, uh, in some part related to what is going on with Bitcoin uh, because the price of Bitcoin is decreasing. Ma most part of this uh, contraction is related to what happened to uh, Solana just a couple of days ago. Uh, as you probably know, Solana uh, at the beginning of uh, September suffered a, a blackout, a stop that required the validators to restart the network. And uh, is this something that uh, obviously influence also the price of Solana, but most of all the price of tokens, because always remember that uh, uh, the tokens behind any kind of technology are much more volatile than the token, than the coin itself of, uh, of, the, plat of uh, the blockchain in this case. The Solana coin is much less volatile than the tokens that uh, are from uh, the old pl DeFi platform that uh, are composing the Solana ecosystem. In this case, uh, the Tulip the token of uh, Solfarm is much more volatile than Solana. And the reason uh, of this blackout is uh, uh, related to the fact that uh, at a certain point uh, it peaked at 400,000 of transaction per second. And it's a quite high number even for Solana that has a high capability of processing transaction per second. And why uh, the reason why I'm showing I'm showing you this news is because what I really care is is you to have always aware that you don't have only to look at the price of the single token, but you have to look at the whole ecosystem that uh, uh, that kind of platform is part of. For example, Sol Solfarm, we have said, is part of Solana. So if uh, there is a problem on Solana, this problem will also aff uh, affect the price of the uh, token of Solfarm. And that's exactly what we have seen here. The price of a Tulip, the Solfarm token, has decreased by almost 60% in not even a couple of days. Okay, understood this, we can go back to the platform and we can have a look on how it works. Well, let's start with the vaults. The vaults are a, a feature, a really easy feature that integrates Radium and Saber. As you can see here, you can select what kind of vault you can uh, you want to retrieve if you want to use vault provided by Radium or if you want to use uh, vaults provided by uh, Saber. All you have to do is select the platform here. You can also choose all, so you will retrieve uh, uh, vaults from Radium and also from Saber. What does it mean the term vault? The term vault is just another word to say a, a pool where you can earn any kind of yield interest from a certain kind of LP token. So an LP token, as usual, is a liquidity pool token. This liquidity pool token is the token that represents the liquidity that you have added on another platform, in this case, or Radium or, or um, Sabre, and uh, represents the liquidity that you have added to, added to a, a certain pool. Let's say, for example, this first uh, vault is uh, the MSOL SOL LP uh, uh, vault. It means that you have uh, gone to, uh, to Sabre and you added liquidity to the MSOL SOL uh, pool. Once you have added liquidity to that pool, you will receive some tokens. This token is called LP tokens and these tokens are representing the liquidity that you have added to that kind of pool. Once you have your uh, LP tokens, you can go to the Soul Farm platform and add them to uh, uh, the vault. In this case, it's really easy. All you have to do is connect, obviously, your wallet. Let's say Phantom. I'm using most of the time Phantom. And uh, once you have connected your wallet, you can just click uh, here. Here right now is saying get your uh, LP tokens. And that's why uh, it is redirecting directly to the page of Sabre. The reason is because I don't have in my wallet any kind of LP tokens from MSOL Sol. 
but once you have your LP tokens, you can just deposit them and you will start earning some interest. Remember that uh, you will start also paying some fees. The fees are the controller fee and the platform fee. As you can see, we are talking about 0.50% and 2.50%. There is no deposit and no withdrawal fee. Remember that uh, you are paying fees only on your rewards. So the capital, the amount of LP tokens, the value of LP tokens that you are just depositing on the platform is free of fees. So it means that you will never pay fees on your uh, or on the amount of uh, value that you are depositing inside the pool. One nice feature by Soul Farm is that it is an auto compounding yield uh, aggregator. It means that it keeps compounding your earning and this is the reason why it's different from Sabre or uh, for example Sunny or whatever. The APY that you will start earning, you can find it in the last column and as you can see here, it is changing by uh, what kind of uh, pool you are using. For example, in this case, Grape USD LP is a pool with impermanent loss because we are talking about uh, two tokens that are different. Uh, that's a different, stories when, uh, a different story when we are talking about this kind of token. And Sol Sol is a, a pool without any or at least uh, no significant impermanent loss and the reason is because the two tokens has the same value. Another story is for example what we have seen here, Grape USDC, we are talking about two completely different kind of tokens, there is impermanent loss and it could be quite high because Grape is a really volatile uh, a token. So don't think that uh, a high APY always means a better opportunity. You really have to understand uh, why you have to judge each pool in uh, with the whole your strategy because it's always a matter of a strategy because re always remember that higher APY always comes with higher risk. Okay, we can go to the next feature. The next feature is the landing feature. The landing feature is really easy to understand. It's like a reserve that is using to leverage the leverage farming. So this is the feature that enables the Soul Farm platform to offer you also a leverage farming. And all it is asking to the user is to add any kind of asset to the reserve. When you have added your asset to the reserve, uh, to add uh, the asset is really easy. You have just to click on the asset that you are interested in. You have just to choose the amount and the percentage is related to how, ma how many uh, tokens, how many coins do you have in your wallet. In this case, I don't have any USDC in the, co in the wallet connected, so that's the reason why here it is written zero. But uh, let's say that I had uh, inside of my wallet uh, 100 USDC. If uh, I choose, uh, let's say 51%, here will be uh, like 51 USDC and the reason is because uh, 51 is the 51, uh, 51 coin is uh, the 51% of mine uh, 100 USDC. Always remember that the APY that is written here is not fixed because it is uh, 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 it can change according, accordingly to uh, the percentage of utilization and the higher is the utilization of that kind of reserve, of that kind of asset, higher is also the APY. And as you can see here, uh, once the, the pool reach uh, uh, the 90%, 95% of utilization, the borrowing feature will be disabled. It means that once uh, the utilization here reach 95%, it will be not possible anymore to take uh, any uh, that kind of token as borrowing in the leverage farming feature. Going to the leverage farming feature and let's have a look at it. As you can see the APY are much higher 
it can reach up to 5,000%. So we are talking really about uh, monsters, monster numbers, really high number. Uh, and the way it is rich is through a uh, leverage farming. A leverage farming that is using a leverage up to three times. Let's have a look and does, on how does it work. For each vault, you have two assets that are composing the uh, liquidity pool token that uh, uh, the platform will start using to provide you the interest that you uh, would like you you chose. Let's say that uh, we choose the Atlas USDC LP and uh, as you can see here in the first uh, uh, row you have uh, the, uh, the possibility to choose how much Atlas and how many uh, USDC you want to provide, you want to invest in this kind of vault. Let's say that we want to <coughs> invest 100 Atlas and a certain amount, whatever you want, of USDC. On the second row, you have to choose what kind of asset do you want to uh, leverage and what kind of asset do you want to borrow. What does it mean? It means, let's say that you want to borrow USDC. Uh, here you can choose the amount of leverage. You can use this kind of slide and you can choose how much do you want to uh, borrow. Going down, you can find how your uh, interest, how much uh, your APY will change accordingly, accordingly to uh, your leverage. Let's say that you choose a two. You can see here that uh, uh, the uh, yield farm is going from 63% to 126%. If you choose three, the amount of APY will increase accordingly and the total amount, uh, the total API, APY, you can find it here in the last row of this uh, interface. As you can see here, you can find also the information about uh, the borrowing interest. The borrowing interest is how much you will pay for uh, the uh, amount of, uh, of the asset that you are borrowing to uh, use the leverage farming. Okay. As you can understand, using a leverage farming could be a great opportunity because obviously you can reach some incredible APY. But uh, that's not completely true because you have always to be aware that are also, there are also many risks connected to this kind of operations. And the first risk is related to the liquidation because once you have created, you have opened a position with leverage, you are at risk of liquidation. And how does it work liquidation? To calculate the liquidation, you have to, uh, you can check the uh, documentation. Uh, if you want, I can leave you also the link of the documentation in the, co in the, in the description below. What does the documentation say? The documentation is saying that uh, you have always to maintain a low to value ratio of at least 85%. To calculate this ratio, you have to take in consideration your debt. So how much uh, cryptos are you taking, are you borrowing? Let's say, for example, that you, uh, you are borrowing $300. So your debt is $300. Uh, and the ratio between this number with the position value. So how much is big your position? The, the value of your position is obviously depending on the price of the tokens that are composing your position. Let's say that your position is composed by a USDC, that is a stable coin, so the, uh, the value of this kind of token will stay stable during the time. But on the other side, you have a really volatile asset like, for example, Atlas. Let's say that when you open the position, the price of Atlas were one. But uh, after a, a couple of weeks, the price of Atlas 
goes down by 80%, let's say, and at that moment, the value of just one atlas is not anymore one dollar, but it's going to 20 cents. So in this case, the, uh, the value of your position, it's not anymore the uh, $300 of USDC that you were borrowing, plus your $100 of your atlas, because the value of your 100 is atlas, it's not anymore 100, but is just $20. So it means that in that moment, the value of your position is, is just $320. And let's try to calculate what will happen in this, case, in this case, and which is the uh, loan to value ratio in the case your debt is always $300, but uh, the, uh, your value position is just $320. To do it, we can use a calculator. Let's say that your, uh, as we have said, that your debt is still $300, but your position is just $320. Let's divide them and you will find that, uh, as you can see, if, uh, okay, just uh, to find the percentage, the actual loan uh, to value ratio is only a uh, 93%. What does it mean? It means that you have, uh, you have gone beyond the liquidation threshold. The liquidation threshold is just 85%. It means that everything that is higher than 85% will trigger a liquidation, will enable uh, the liquidators to take your position, receiving a 5% of liquidation bounty, that is like a reward, and you can find it here, and the uh, remaining 10% of your position will be uh, returned to uh, your account. So be always aware that using leverage farming, yes, can be a great opportunity, but uh, if you are choosing a really volatile uh, asset, you have to be always aware that there is a threshold that if you go beyond it, you will uh, trigger a, a, a liquidation. And the liquidators will receive, will take your position, receiving also a 5% of bounty, so a reward, and you will just receive at the 10% of your position. The liquidation is not the only risk that you are encountering using leverage farming. Because, for example, as it is explained here, you can find it here, this is from the Sol Farm Medium. For example, when Pepe supplies USDC and borrows Ray to farm in Ray USDC LP, he is effectively short on Ray. This is because in token lending, the borrower is required to return the exact, uh, the exact amount of tokens to the lender. If Ray price rises, then some of the Ray in the LP will be sold for USDC, resulting in impermanent loss. This means the borrower will have less Ray than borrowed and will therefore have to buy back at a higher price. What does it mean? It means that in the moment you are leveraging, you are taking, a, you are borrowing a certain kind of asset, you are accepting the fact that in a certain time after, you will have to repay that exact amount of token of that kind of, uh, of cryptocurrency. And no matter what will happen with your LP tokens. Remember that the amount of tokens in a certain pool will change during the time accordingly to uh, how many people are buying or are selling a certain amount of uh, a token inside that pool. Let's say that the, uh, the pool, as in the example that we have just read, uh, is composed by Ray and USDC, even if the price of Ray that uh, apparently could be a, a good point because it's something that uh, could uh, enable you to earn more from the Ray that you have just borrowed. But it's not completely good because the truth is that 
the ray inside the pool that you are investing in are diminishing in numbers because uh, to maintain the same amount of value inside the pool the number of ray will decrease during the time i made a complete tutorial on how the impermanent loss works and i will leave you also the link in the right corner here and if this mechanism is not completely clear to you please have a look at that video because it could be really helpful because always remember that when you are using any kind of pool the exact amount of tokens that you will receive in the moment when you withdraw your assets can be uh, different from the amount of tokens that you deposited in the moment uh, that you started that kind of investment. The problem with leverage is that uh, even if uh, the amount of tokens inside the pool is changing, the amount of token that you have to go to return back to the platform is always the same. So that's another risk that you have to take into consideration. Okay, guys, we have almost finished this overview on Soul Farm. As you can see, as you can understand, we are talking about a platform that has some really interesting mechanism that is allowing them to offer to you some great interest because as you have seen the interest and the APY in the platform is really high, especially when we are talking about leverage farming. But be aware of the risk because higher APY comes always with higher risk. So do well your math before doing anything. And please, if you, if you decide to use this kind of platform, do it only if you have really clear how does it work the liquidation mechanism and the impermanent loss and why with the impermanent loss the risk for you is like to be slightly short on a certain kind of token so pay really a, a great attention a high attention on this kind of platform okay guys if you have any question if you have any doubt just Write me in the comments below and I will be more than happy to answer to you. And uh, please, if you are not already subscribed, press the subscribe button and leave me a thumbs up to help spread the word and reach more people. Thank you for following me and see you tomorrow. Bye, guys.